Hey y'all, what's up, what's up? It's your girl here, MJ's Neo. Welcome to the channel. Yes, I've been waiting for this story to unfold. It is so much drama around it. Um, This is about Risa Tisa. There is so many videos about it, but I wanted to talk about the drama that she had with Charlamagne of God and um, other TikTokers saying that she was making this up just to make money. That's the part I want to talk about. But briefly, I'm going to talk briefly about what what it's about so Atlanta woman's five hour 50 part who the f did I marry tiktok series captivate millions Risa Tisa's insanely dramatic tiktok series tells the story of her pathological liar ex in 50 parts oh you guys can hear me make sure I put my mic down in 50 parts so as you see here she's telling her story of her lying ex and it's it's a it's, it's long so there is a, a video on youtube i'm gonna put a link down in the description that tells you i think it's like seven hours they say it's seven hours um they upload it on to youtube if you want to see it yourself and if you don't want to go to tiktok so why did she do this why did she told her story like this to everybody which is over sharing i but she knew what she was getting herself into too when she put it on social media and she was prepared for it. So Risa, Risa Tessa says, I hope I'm not butchering her name, but I am. If I am, I apologize. I know people are fascinated by this, but more than anything, I hope there's a woman watching this and she says, okay, it's time for me to ask some questions. That's my hope. So I'm gonna play like a video for you guys. So you guys can kind of see what's going on. It's not gonna be a long video, but like, um, I saw somebody broke the whole, wow, who the F did I marry series down and that was none other that was none other than michelle daniel so be sure to go check her out um she broke the whole video down i think in like 20 minutes 28 minutes or something like that but i'm gonna play a little clip for you guys and then we'll come back and talk about it a little bit laughs in her face why um probably because he is a vp at a condiment company why would you need another job? He takes care of everything financially. Well, she ends up actually getting the job and all she needs to do is do the background check. And for this job, they want to have the husband's info as well, as then they need his social security number. And honey, this is when Legion's mask starts to unveil. The dark, tall, and handsome knight in shining armor that was changing her tires starts to <laughs> morph into a Disney villain. This man lied about the most minuscule things, things you don't need to lie about. Let's listen him out. He was never a resident in California. You ain't in these California streets, boy. I haven't seen Legion. I've been here for a while. The man did have multiple addresses though, like Philadelphia and Georgia. He also had multiple ex-wives, not one multiple. Forgot that part, I guess. The second ex-wife where he's close to the children, and unfortunately the daughter that passed away, Tessa ends up just calling her. She doesn't bring up the death because that's kind of odd and just kind of asks, oh, how's your daughter doing? And the ex says, she's doing fine. She's like right in the other room. Anyway, the ex kind of knew what was going on because she went through pretty much the same thing that Tessa's going through. And before she hangs up the phone, she tells this woman that you need to leave. You need to get far away from this man as fast as possible. Put on your spikes and identify as a sprinter, okay, for about 30 seconds and get the F out. His first wife that also cheated on him, according to Legion, that he forgot to tell Tessa about, came out with a video because he spread rumors that she attacked him. This chapter of my life is closed. I have moved on. It's been more than 10 years. I'm over it. I'm done. I don't, I'm good, okay? But after I say this, let's just leave it alone. I don't want to talk about this anymore. I'm not going to address it anymore because I have nothing to do with this. This is my past life. The book is closed, okay? So Legion, as y'all call him, is a despicable, nasty, and vile individual. I too, I fell for the trap over 10 years ago. Yes, he was charming and I was broken mentally. Okay? Understand, self-love was not. He had family turn against me because he wanted to tell people lies about me and things of that nature. And unfortunately, he's very, very good at what he does. Tessa finds out the siblings all a lie. He only has two brothers. Why he lied about that? Maybe to look like he's a family man because you can trust a family man. He has absolutely no close siblings. They don't talk to him because they think he's crazy. In fact, they haven't spoken since 2015. So who? the heck 
Was he talking on the phone then? Was there someone on the other line or is he just making up conversations holding a phone to his ear like a lunatic? But you ain't never once said, oh hi, put that on speaker so I can say hello. Legion was on the phone for some time hours. So the second brother was his twin and this is important because his twin actually has a job. He is actually a VP of a pretty big company. He has a five bedroom and five bathroom house. He has cars. He has money. Everything that Legion wanted to be and what Legion was doing was pretty much pretending that he was in fact his brother. When in reality, he was the evil twin. He had no sisters, no half sisters. He's been in jail. He impersonated a cop, allegedly A-B-U-S-E-D, his ex-wife. He was paying money to have sexual relations with S-E-X workers. Tessa said that she was interested in doing some certain things in the bedroom and Legion said it made him feel very uncomfortable. Well, he felt very comfortable doing those specific things with the S-E-X workers. He's a weird guy. He told my mother he was like this big time producer. Legion's ex-girlfriend. Y'all, I'm only on here because I'm here to collaborate Risa Tisa's story. I too survived Legion, AKA, I had to call the police to get this man out of my apartment in Clayton County. And another ex-girlfriend. Yes, I did survive Legion. This man told me he loved me on our very first date. And yeah, they just keep on coming out. A neighbor came out too. And during the pandemic, we all shut down. Everybody trying to find tissue and stuff. Mm. And she moves this random man in out of nowhere. Legion's real brother actually contacted Tessa recently and confirmed that they and the most of the family do not talk to him, but asked if she could tell the people of the internet of Legion's diagnosis. The parents did everything they could to get Legion psychiatric help. At one point, they were taking him to different therapists and psychologists. He's been diagnosed as a kid with both bipolar and schizophrenia. I did not know this. Their father came out of retirement to help pay for the medications. And as Legion got older, he refused to take them. He said, we support you. The family is not mad at you. We've known how he is for years. Now, Legion is also getting a chance to tell his side of the story on a YouTube channel named Simply Wavy this Thursday, February the 29th. Can't wait for that. And I need to clear that up. Was the Chase loan, the approval of the 700,000, was that a real thing? I never I never went to my bank and, and, and needed to get approved for a loan. Getting up every morning, talking to your brother, who was on the phone? Um, Was the proof of funds ever an issue? To the two accounts I let her know about, I had five all together, but she had access to them. She was able to go to the bank, buy what she wanted. Okay, so like I said, I'll put a link to that YouTuber channel down in the description box. Um, it was a lot to unfold and I'm happy that she made that video because it. Um, I watched the whole video. And I've been watching clips from other people's channels, but I watched hers and she helped me understand what was going on. So yeah, so basically her husband had mental issues. He was, you know, lying. He didn't want no help. The family has nothing to do with him because he's a liar. And he, you heard that he had plenty of exes that fell for the same trap as well as um, Risa Tisa. So that's what I wanted to talk about was um uh, apparently people were saying that she was lying um about uh about him and that also she's doing this for clout so i wanted to play that those audios for you guys so you guys can hear what she said so this is what i was talking about so who the f did i marry tiktok arisa tisa addresses rumors about how much money she racks up from viral series so let me play this video for you well there's several videos money that I've made on TikTok with this whole who the fuck did I marry series um, is in wildly inaccurate and I'm gonna tell you guys why so when I started the series I was not yet in the creator fund um, I didn't get approved for it until like midway into the series right so all the videos I did beforehand the stories about the amount of money that I've made on TikTok with this whole who the fuck did I marry series um, is in wildly and weren't even counted for the creator fund. And then it's only counted based off of the eligible views. So if you do the math, it's not that much, but here's the kicker. Guess who got suspended out of the creator fund? Yep. I got suspended because I had multiple violations, because I had re-up, weren't even counted for the uploaded some of the videos in the series, and you can't do that. So for the next 30 days, 
I am not making any money from the videos. I am merely making these videos from the heart. <laughs> so I am suspended. But the good news is, in my mind, I have an idea for like a series of videos. It will not be 50 parts, but just uploaded something that I can document and talk to you guys about and again upload it all at once so I was going to do it sooner rather than later but now that I'm suspended I'm gonna just wait out my 30 days but I'm gonna do my 30 days like a woman and then I'll be back at submitting all kinds of videos and you name it playlist all kinds of stuff but so for the people who think I've made 80 something thousand something than a hundred thousand three hundred thousand I am so sorry to disappoint you, but the actual number is nowhere near. I am not quitting my day job. So let me read this. Really restore and creativity program beta. We have reviewed your appeal and restored the eligibility of your video. The Acura rewards during this period of time will be updated in your creativity program dashboard. Thank you for being a part of the TikTok community. And it, it clearly lets you know down there. So. Risa Tisa's ex Jerome McCoy says he's thinking about talking, taking legal action as a, her allegations are hurting his job. Jerome Legion McCoy from Risa Tessa's Who Did I Marry? Address people slandering his name and say he's deleting his TikTok. I ain't lie about anything. If you don't know something about somebody you dating, ask. Stop trying to Google them or trying to find out stuff. Um, and if they tell you right now, you know, it ain't necessarily none of your business, maybe you should just leave it alone. Everything ain't your business all the time about everybody. Every detail of their personal life when you first meet is not. Okay, so that's him. We already know the deal on you, honey. You are a scammer. That's what you are. You're a liar. So anyway, let's go on to the Charlemagne Lagarde, the Breakfast Club, shall we? <laughs> So Risa Tisa opens up about the negative comments she received since telling her story. It says a very famous personality called her a big bag. Who can that be? Dun da da da. Charlemagne the God. So let's hear what he has to say. Talking about my look. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I hear a lot of big back behavior. Does she have a big back? She do. She do give Sheila that was driving up the mountain. Okay. Okay. Yeah, she, she Sheila did. was beautiful though. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. no. You talked about the big back, yeah, not the, big the face. Back. Yeah, she, you're right, you're she's right. cool. What's Cause, your cause, thing with big backs? No, recently? I'm just saying, because in a situation like this, some of you big backs, y'all got to stop being so thirsty for a man. There's a man out there for you, okay? This woman believed all of this because she wanted to believe all of this. Big back belief mm -hmm. isn't like everybody else's belief, mm -hmm. okay? She said it herself. He mm -hmm. said everything I wanted to hear. Yeah. She wanted to believe whatever was coming out of his mouth because she wanted a man so bad. And then I seen him and he actually looked like her butt was... Yes. I'm going to be honest with you, man. I hear a lot of big back behavior. And then there was. Okay. So I want to say something here. When I first saw this video, this clip, whatever, of The Breakfast Club, I feel like they're a little untouched with what was going on in the story. It sounded like what they were saying was, if you're an overweight person, from what Charlamagne is saying, you're, you're, you're sounding too desperate. Cause that's what big back is is for people who are fat they're, they're sounding too desperate to want a man or get a man and um i also saw i also heard that too from a friend that a lot of people said that why does she got with this bum um i don't think people quite understand in the story he was paying for everything he was paying all her bills so he wasn't practically a bum he came off to her as a person with money so you have to keep that in mind that's why she fell for it and shout out to lala milan Thank you for saying this in the comments. I want to make sure I boost this up as close as possible so people can read it. It says, well, while my malnourished back has been tricked multiple times. So what you call that? A skinny spin sucker? So she's letting you know anybody can get tricked into this. He had multiple exes. A lot of people were falling for his lies. That's why they don't want nothing to do with him. This is why I state it's good to get research. It's good to, this is why I always say on this channel, look up things, Google things, go look at interviews, go look at videos. When you're talking about a topic, make sure you know everything because a lot of people are not happy with The Breakfast Club as to what they said. I know somebody else spoke out about it. Um, somebody else has spoke out about it. I don't, uh, I don't really, I, to me, that person was just trying to put themselves into the equation because they realized this TikToker, um, Risa, is getting all this clout. Um, I don't know who the other person is. I might show a clip or whatever. But they put themselves in the equation because they started arguing with, with Jess Hilarious about the big back and all this other mess. I, I can care less. 
but um yeah anyway going on so what i would like to do now i want to play the audio where she was on um yeah she was on tamara hall show i want to play the clip where she was on there and hopefully i don't get hopefully i don't get in trouble because sometimes you get in trouble with playing certain clips but i might just show a picture of tamara hall and her sitting down talking but you hear the audio but yeah let me play it for you guys way to keep your own peace is to not disturb the peace of others mm -hmm. uh, i disturbed that woman's peace and that wasn't my intention so i apologize mm -hmm. if my words made her feel that way but i do have two things to say mm -hmm. number one i never said she don't deserve love because of her size <laughs> right i didn't even know she was big just yeah. told the story mm -hmm. and i said it sounds like big back behavior and mm -hmm. then i started talking about big back belief now if y'all yeah. want to have a conversation about reinforcing negative stereotypes of big backs, I mm -hmm. understand, mm -hmm. I'm open to it. But acting like uh, I was having a conversation about Risa Tisa's looks and size, that's not accurate. I was yeah. speaking in general terms about big back behavior and yeah. big back belief. And I actually said, mm -hmm. nobody has to be that desperate because there is a man out there for you. Mm -hmm. And I do have one final point, just one. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. We you, all have social good. media. No, we all have social media. Absolutely. And we all use it for different reasons. Yeah. And Risa's getting a lot of uh, props for being so vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Salute to her. But I personally feel like we have to stop bringing this stuff to social media. Yeah. If you don't, I tell y'all all the time, mm -hmm. the easiest way to keep your own peace is to not disturb the peace of others. Mm -hmm. uh, I disturbed that woman's peace and that wasn't my intention. So I apologize mm -hmm. if I want people to have an opinion about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Cause some of this stuff should just be reserved for our therapists. If we can't handle people having yeah. an opinion about whatever we are venting about, keep right. it off that's, social media. That's, that's my personal. That's opinion. a good point. When you put it out there in the, in the world, the world's mm -hmm. gonna come back many different ways. Thank Absolutely, yeah, and she might, said yeah. that she was uh, um, already insecure about her weight. So then, that why would you come to such a big, big, big platform, thinking that you, you know you're gonna be off limits from comments like? Because it's people who was actually going in. Absolutely. On her. Absolutely. You you didn't call her a big back. No, I was just speaking towards yeah. big back behavior and yeah, big back belief big based back off behavior. the story you told. Absolutely. And that's why even when you reference Sheila, you reference Sheila from Why Did I Get Married? Yes. Fantastic movie. Because Absolutely. even that movie reinforced those same stereotypes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. And but and we also seen where Sheila ate small. She unbigged her back. She, she didn't unbigged her back. her back. She definitely did. And and then he that that man came around. Oh, you know was, what I'm oh, saying? He was going he crazy. Wanted her and then I want people to have an opinion about it. Absolutely. Because some of the, the skinny girl, she was, she was spending up the money and all that. So it, it just all of that to say, like you said, just get therapy for it, especially especially if it is an insec insecurity of yours. Yeah, I don't. I just don't think those are things that should be on social media because everybody's yeah. not going to agree with you. No, nope. there's going to be people that Nowhere. have negative things to say. So yeah. I just feel like some of this stuff should be reserved for our mm -hmm. therapists if we can't handle people having an opinion yeah. about whatever we are venting yeah. about because you're not then, always going to hear what you want to hear. Yeah, and then to say, especially the more famous personality. I it sure hurts you when anybody say. I get it, but I respect. I, I, understand, I, I understand that, though. And okay. once again, if I disturbed her piece, I apologize for disturbing her piece, but th that was uh, not my intention. Well, that was very big of you to apologize, and I love you for that, bro. I love you, too. Yeah. The, the skinny girl, she was, she was spending talking about my looks, and then there was a hurt the most, I guess. The one, so the ones where they say, you know, she did this for clout. This is not the way to get clout, because because you you are literally opening up yourself, and again, you're being vulnerable. Those hurt. The ones that talk about the fact, and I know people have seen this, um, she does not look like what a VP would would date. And it was a, it was a woman, it was a TikTok creator who was talking about my looks, and then there was a. Person, a very famous personality that called me a big back, talking about my weight. And so it's things like that that I'm like, Jesus, you know, I'm, I can already admit I'm self-conscious, you know, as a, as a heavier woman. I feel like how I look should not dictate whether or not I deserve <laughs> what I want. So that was, um... That was that was disappointing, and it was and it was hurtful, especially the the one that was the more famous um, personality, because again, I'm I'm more than just my weight, like, and not to mention me, you know that it's it's hard. I do I will admit this. I appreciate when I've met both men and women who have said thank you, because for me it's like okay, I know I'm getting attacked, 
but it did help somebody. When I hear someone that said, girl, I watched all 50 parts, I genuinely am humbled that someone took 500 minutes out of their life <laughs> and watched my, you know, the story that I went through. And my prayer is that, again, if there is a woman or man who's like, I want to be married, I want kids, yeah. I want this, and I need to have it right now, and you know something's wrong, yeah. but you're afraid to investigate because you're afraid that you might be wrong. And it's like, I'm, I'm here to say, look, it costs nothing to verify, but if you don't verify, honey, it may cost you everything. What negative comments have... Well, um, for people who are out here saying, oh, a VP would be marrying her, just like I say, I let you guys saw the comment that Lala Milan made because that's a very important comment because I want people to know this can happen to anybody. It doesn't I've known skinny women, thick women, women who look drop dead gorgeous, got tricked and lied to in multiple, uh, multiple, uh, multiple times. Jump on this app and ask for our advice, and they stay. It always starts off the same way. They start off like, okay. We've been together since we were 13 years old, you know, ups and downs, every relationship has, but we have two different opinions on marriage. So we want to hear what you guys have to say about it. Well, I gave him the ultimatum and I told him that if he didn't propose to me by December 31st at 1159, that I was going to leave because I feel like I do all the wifey duties with no ring or no sign of commitment. And then they start sounding like it also isn't as easy as just getting up and packing my bags like everybody's telling me to do again they start off asking us questions like a serious question you have for people in a relationship me and my boyfriend always get in a fight over money after all my money goes into my bills i usually have nothing left so i picked up three jobs right i'm not talking about like hundreds of dollars i'm talking about 10 20 you know maybe 50 and it majority of the time it's to be put back into the house right am i wrong and then start sounding like this. Like three jobs with a man is crazy. And just for all of you who are curious, I did have a conversation with my man and it was actually really good. And for the people who are saying I should get up and leave, people have been married for 20 and 30 years. You think they just got up and left or they made it work, made compromises, make sacrifices. That's what you do for a strong relationship because at the end of the day, my man is not a bum. He does work very hard. He's just stingy with his money. Like you're asking for help. And then when we offer it to you, because you asked, you get mad at us. If y'all aren't prepared for the kind of responses that you're gonna get, don't ask people. That people actually get invested in you. People worry about you. People care about you. People pray about you. People are genuinely concerned about you. Because you come on the internet crying, oh, my man got a computer for his son and not my son. Like, y'all come on here crying. You get all the sympathy and empathy from other women. And then you act like y'all are just too invested in other people's lives. You were the one who invited us in. And they're telling a true story. Every party in that story will emerge. He says, oh, my ex is about to walk this way. I said, your ex? He's like, yeah, my ex. I said, oh, does she live here? He says, yeah, she lives here. I said, oh, interesting. So she walks past and he's like, Ashton, Ashton. He's calling her name she was ignoring him and I said oh she must be upset she must be upset because you're with another girl are y'all not cool he says we were cool up until now I guess and we walked to the elevator we see her again he tries to talk to her again he's like Ashton Ashton and she's like I'm good and she's like this is Cameron she's like I don't care he says she knows about you and she's like I could care less so we go into his unit and he says I need to go talk to her it's been 30 minutes but TikTok being TikTok the ex makes an appearance on the on the app so I'm the ex um, in question and I'm gonna start by saying that it's Ashley not Ashton we've been together for like a year and a half now we've been like on and off and we were just talking earlier that day like we probably broke up like 48 hours like prior to last night one thing about me is like i'm always gonna keep it cute like i i don't like you cannot make me jealous like it just it's not a thing like because i simply don't care and like i said like no shade to this girl but i'm gonna tell you like where you went wrong like or what i would have done differently if i were like in your situation 
the minute he would have called my name, I would have been out of there. And not even 30 seconds later, I hear like knocking on my door. I couldn't even like put my pizza down yet. I hear knocking on my door and it's literally him, obviously. I guess he came up here to like explain himself, but when I tell you I literally did not need an explanation because I didn't care, like it was just a waste of time. I'm like, where is this girl? You were just with her 30 seconds ago. Like, what are you doing here? Like. He's like, I'm not even attracted to her. Like, you know, I was just having such a hard time dealing with our breakup. He has no intentions of going back there. Meanwhile, the girl is downstairs making TikToks after this man literally said, I'm going to go check on my ex. Like, this is where you went wrong again. This is why it's really important. Like, as women, we need to, like, know our worth because there's no reason you should have tolerated all the disrespect that you did that night. Now, before I get too deep into it, I have to say this, because the ex seems to think that she and the new girl are completely different. Y'all, neither one of y'all stood on business, okay? You're judging her, saying that, uh, while he's downstairs with me, you're upstairs in his apartment all alone. Girl, exactly. How you let this man talk you into getting into your apartment when 48 hours ago... This is your man. Yes. Look at the screen. That's mine. Y'all really aren't that different. Now, people didn't exactly love Ashley's delivery, but she's absolutely right. You have to be able to walk away from the first sign of disrespect. That man played in your face multiple times. The first time that he felt like he had to get his ex's attention, that was the first red flag that you overlooked. Then he saw her again at the elevator. Okay, that's number two. Then he left you in his apartment for 30, 45 minutes, just left you there. Didn't check on you, didn't text you, didn't call you, nothing. She was the most important thing to him in that moment and on that night. So I'm glad you didn't continue to entertain that man, but you stayed way too long. I know she said that, oh, you know, while I was waiting, I, she was filming a TikTok live in the moment and all of that. But girl, that man had you up there waiting with no concern for you. Every second that you stayed, it was like chipping away a little bit at your dignity. No self-respecting woman is waiting on a man to finish with an ex to come say or do anything else. And it's not trying to be shady or anything. I'm trying to use it as a cautionary tale for other women. The millisecond that you feel some disrespect, you're out of there. We don't need some explanation from some raggedy man because a clown will always invite you to his circus. There's a lot of things that I um Bye. Lord. Got me a P5. I'm gonna make sure he at the house. When them taxes hit people to see that there is different type of women that are not fat that looks good that's not ugly or looks different they're different or they have a different skin tone you know white girls light-skinned girls you saw i showed all of them they all get tricked and unlike tessa i think her name Risa tessa she was warning the women out here not to fall in these traps but these other young ladies i'm sorry to say they look bad, you know, they look good. Excuse me, they look good, but they stayed in those relationships. Despite what those men are doing to them, they stayed in those relationships. So I just wanted to bring this out that it, it doesn't it doesn't matter how you look, you can get tricked, you can get manipulated by anybody at any time. Who are good looking, men who have gotten tricked too as well. So it doesn't matter how you look, you can get manipulated anytime if you fall for it. So I'm happy that she made this video so people can be aware of it because that's what her, her goal was, that other people can be on the lookout, men and women, not just women, men and women, to see the signs of uh, of somebody who possibly can be a scammer, who's a liar, um, that you're going to get involved with. So I want to say this. I did have somebody told me that a lot of the black people were dragging her and um, the white people were taken up for her. I'm not surprised if that was happened because I saw Charlamagne the guy, somebody who clearly didn't even know what the story was all about. You can tell they just want to talk about it because the story went viral. Um, I don't know how true that was with the t white TikTokers taking up for her, but I was not surprised that black TikTokers were talking trash about her. I'm not surprised. Like, I'm not surprised now one bit. You know, we need, like, the reason why I talked about this video is I... I really want people to understand that before you judge somebody, 
try to get the information before you talk about them. I'm so happy that um, some of the YouTubers did a very, they li listened to the whole five hour, seven hour video, however long it is, um, to get the story and put it together. And it seems like to me, I feel like regular people like me who are on YouTube in the blogs, I feel like they get the story more quicker and better than people who are like the breakfast club because clearly they just talked a little bit about it and, and kept on they didn't really know too much about the story and i i just wish that people would do the research more and yes it is dangerous to overshare your personal life i've always talked about this on this channel but with her she wanted to warn people and i like that about her like i said she sounds like a wonderful person and to me she's good looking she's not ugly because she's fat i keep trying to tell you people fat people are not ugly okay so they you might not like their weight yes the weight might be unhealthy but they are good looking people as well and anybody can get scammed so i've talked about this just recently on my other video how somebody was trying to be my friend in it gram and i was like not having it there's a lot of scammers on the gram they try to become your friends or they try to become your lovers and the next thing you know they want to ask you for money so scam anybody can get scammed okay it doesn't matter what size you are okay or how you look but yeah let me know what y'all think down below in the comment area but as for now I'll see y'all later peace